And now, your official Tiger Bait Live show with Mike Scarborough and Buddy Songy starts now. All right, guys, welcome in. We got a lot to discuss tonight. We got LSU spring football. We've got football recruiting. We got new arena approved by the Baton Rouge Metro Council earlier this evening. Um, all the Kim Mulkey criticism that seems like it's not hasn't died. Uh, that took place on Sunday, and we're here on Wednesday, and it's still not a topic that's died. Uh, we'll dive into that a little bit tonight. I got an opinion on that. Uh, we'll see if Buddy does as well. And um, LSU baseball head to, heads to Starkville this weekend. Just finished off another win over North Dakota State. We can talk about LSU baseball. You guys drive the show with your comments. And as always, if you're enjoying the show, please do hit that like button for us and uh, spread the word. And um, Mike Scarborough here. And welcome in, buddy Sanji. Good to see you, Mike. Publisher at TigerBait.com. 25-plus years. And, uh, folks, it is – you know, you always say you want to be number one, but Mike, I don't remember recent memory where LSU has had three teams all playing at the same time. Number two, men's baseball, number two across the board. Uh, look, the last couple, three games have been a little boring. If you have that same sentiment, I, I know the feeling. Go to play Mississippi State, then host Florida uh, at, uh, uh, of course, uh, I mean, you know, Vandy coming up, Arkansas, at Arkansas week three, Vandy here, and then Tennessee week five. So uh, an incredible stretch in the uh, SEC start. Softball, they are undefeated still, beat Texas 11 a.m. game, 23-0. and 0. They've won seven games by one run. That's why they're so good this year. But number two in the country. And, of course, gymnastics posted a 198-4 at the River Center. Gymnastics, softball, baseball, all number two nationally right now. And the irony of it all is that Oklahoma is one in gymnastics. Oklahoma is one in softball. And they're coming into the league next year. Texas, of course, was three. LSU was two. A lot going on. Uh, football recruiting. And, oh, by the way, the 2019 team continues to cash checks. You see the money all these guys. Oh, yeah. What a great story. Lloyd Cushenberry was the guy that they took on the day of signing. Liked him a lot, but said, I think, what was he, a three-star, a low three-star? Yep. Folks, don't let ratings in and, and all that stuff. Man, I just you. think about what Patrick Queen was and what people were saying about him after 2018 season. I remember an interview that kid for a, a snippet out of Livonia. He was a yeah. running back, a linebacker. Look yeah. what happened to him. Of course, we know Chase is going to get paid next year. Justin Jefferson is going to get paid again. And it goes on and on and on. Clyde Edwards Elayer is a free agent. But once again, when you start talking about what they did, 15 and all the teams they beat, and now the money those guys are accruing. Oh, by the way, Damian Lewis. Uh, how about this? Daniil Hunter uh, also cashes in two years with the Texans, $49 million, $48 million. A lot of people making a lot of money. And no, the Saints aren't going to be bringing in any LSU guys. It just doesn't fit their uh, M.O. 10-1 to 1 vote by the Baton Rouge Metro, Metro Council this afternoon to approve a uh, going ahead with a new uh, LSU uh, arena and uh, entertainment uh, complex. And uh, you had one no vote. Uh, that's uh, Shauna Banks. And you had one uh, uh, Daryl Hurst who abstained. That's pretty much a landslide vote. Uh, I know there were some people who maybe thought a wrench might get thrown in talking about um, – uh, efforts that uh, will have gone by the wayside to attract uh, new uh, years of effort to attract new events to the the River Center, uh, which as someone that's uh, been an avid concert goer for many years, um, I have to tell you there has not been a single event at that River Center since 1991 when I saw Van Halen that has attracted me or, or made me consider going there. I was there two Fridays ago to the go to go to the boat show. And I was in and out of there in 45 minutes because they had nothing there. So this is a much needed uh, facility. Um, 
Look, they're they're going at breakneck speed, obviously. Um, the way at LSU athletic department officials are talking on the record in interviews, the way they're talking off the record, um, there, there's nobody that seems skeptical amongst those people. I think the only thing that I'm skeptical about is, you know, is there really some outside entity somewhere in the world that's going to want to spend three to four hundred million dollars on planning an arena here that they pay for and run for 30 years and that they think that um, they can make their money back in a, in, in a 30 year time period at that price tag? Um, I question the pop, the population of the area. Um, how many events you're going to attract? Are you all of a sudden going to start beating out Smoothie King for acts? Um, I get we keep talking about the Moody Center in Austin, Texas, but Baton Rouge, I'm sorry, is not Austin, Texas. Um, but look, they, they seem to know something none of us do. And um, uh, uh, I sure do like their enthusiasm, so I hope it happens. And um, Buddy's skeptical. He uh, needs a glass half, uh, uh, half uh, empty hat, and I'm half full on this one. Let's say let bon temps roule, let the good time flow. Unfortunately, I have lived here for a long time, and I have seen politics. And I'll bet you just a $50 bill that it is going to come o over many million more than it, it they say it will. And after the fact, um, look, uh, five years, uh, maybe six if they're lucky. What's the price tag are, are you hearing? 350 to 400. Yeah. I mean, they keep bringing 15,000 capacity. Okay. Well, it'll probably be another 50 to 100 million over that. It's just Louisiana. The way well, it's, it's things. unfortunately, Kim, Moulton but, 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 but buddy, the way they're talking, but the difference is, is it's not coming out of the pockets here. Yeah. According to them, they think somebody's coming from out of state and they're going to build it and own it. Look, and then uh, turn over the keys to it in 30 years. I'll give you a parallel that everybody can, can relate to as negative and half empty as Mike is on the defensive tackle spot for LSU football in 2024. I'm right there in that same boat for this getting done on time at uh, the cost we're going to hear. So look, when the shovel gets put in the ground, I'll get more excited. But Louisiana, if you know anything about it, that L, uh-huh. Let's see how they do this. Uh, Look, I know you're excited about it, and I know you like to go to concerts. And I, but even Kim Mulkey said it. She doesn't know she's still going to be coaching when that. If but, it's five years, she could be here. I don't think she seems to think it's going to be five years. It's well, just, the associate athletic director is saying she wants it in four. Yeah. And well, does she has she ever lived in Louisiana long? Uh, I don't know that this Louis, the good old boy Louisiana network has anything to say with it now. Okay. Um. Well, sorry. I I I, I don't know. It, it's. This isn't the EWE days. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, um, <laughs> we'll see. Um, let's scroll down. Let, let, I'm going to stick to that topic a little bit. Um, let's. I'm going to scroll down and get to, um, yeah, Todd Davis. Van Halen was great with Dave Lee Roth. He sucks live. Hagar is better live. Um, Dream Chaser, I'm an LSU fan and got to love Kim, but she was wrong for saying that. Um, I'm going to tackle that in a minute. Hal Jubin, where are they uh, they're going to put it? I think it's it's really looking to me like the LSU golf course is where it's going to be. Um, I called Buddy earlier today. He was in the middle of his dinner. I said, how nice is the LSU golf course? Uh, is anybody going to miss it? And um, uh, that seems like the most logical spot. You know, we were talking about Bernie Moore and having to build a new Bernie Moore, having to build a new auditorium and all this and that. and that was ruled to be cost prohibitive uh, because if you're talking 350 to 400, you, you start doing that and all of a sudden you're at 600. Um, and so I think the golf course might be a uh, suitable. I really do. I'd say that's a lot of land. Yeah. And um, well, no, when you asked me, it was so funny because I said, it, it doesn't matter. Now, look, if you're a golfer, you know, out there that you grew up playing LSU many, many years ago, public course, uh, but uh, it, it's uh, it's a goat ranch at times, uh, especially well, now, uh, ever since Johnson left. But all of their golf is done at U Club. Uh, well, with well, the LSU course. golf course, how does it compare to the Brett courses? Uh, uh, about the same. Okay. It's on par. I mean, that's not really saying much. So maybe they work out a deal with Webb. 
or something for LSU golfers or uh, LSU folks. No, I, I don't know what they'll do about that, but uh, they'll lose. But that's uh, to me, that's where it's got to be. Yeah. All right, once again, Mike, once Mike Johnson left LSU golf uh, club, uh, and of course, that's uh, it really started to go down. Okay. Um, I've never been out there. Yeah. Um, Bart Smokey, uh, Zeppelin in the PMAC in late 70 was, was great. Uh, talked about this over and over. Greatest concert I ever saw live was the police in 1983 at the PMAC. I was there with my little sister, took her to see Duran Duran on Valentine's Day in 1984. It was like 14 to 1 girls to guys in that place, screaming. My eardrums were busted for a week. Um, but in the early 90s, they, they quit coming. Um you know, we get with get we get the normal country acts. We get uh, Jeff Foxworthy and um, Leonard Skinner without all their members uh, sounding like crap. The concert selection in this city has been garbage for years. I'm sorry. Um, hopefully, it gets better. Uh, a lot of us who like to go to live shows have to go to New Orleans. We have to go to Houston, and that's part of the reason why I think Baton Rouge is what was woke up. Uh, yeah, Todd Davis, Duran Duran's still good, and they bring beautiful women. I tried to convince some of my buddies to go to New Orleans last year. I couldn't get them to do it. I said, are y'all crazy? Um, Eric DeLine, y'all y'all need to read the article. LSU doesn't want competition. The River Center can only seat 3,500 for a concert for 30 years. LSU doesn't want – that's right, and that's, that's part of what they were voting on tonight, um, that if it gets built, the Centralplex will not book any acts. Uh, that need over 3,500 seats. And so, and by the way, 3,500 is still a good midsize show for bands who are getting up in age and, and um, stuff like that. But, you know, most of those acts end up at LaBerge and, and what LaBerge does get, it isn't comparable to what they're getting at the casinos in Gulfport Biloxi at all. Um, okay. Look, guys, Old Miss got a new arena. Should have addressed this 10 or 15 years ago. Um, that goes back to Louisiana and the way things are done here. Yep, and I got to admit, I'm not very much of a country music guy at all. I don't, I'm not, I don't like new country, especially. Um, so maybe those of you who like country have been happy with what you've gotten or you're going an hour to the Cajun Dome and getting your fill. Uh, but other than that, I, I, I think it's been garbage here. Um, all right, let's see. All right, this Kim Mulkey thing, let's go ahead and uh, address it. In fact, uh, it now looks like that um, Nadia is a troll. She says Mulkey is as awful as her clothes. She is terrible for the game. And uh, here we go. You're going to be getting a nice, friendly timeout. Um, Where was she from? Uh, three, three guesses. The first two, Iowa or South Carolina? One of them, too. Okay. I'm, I'm guessing South Carolina. Um, look, Kim Mulkey is a certified tomboy. She is what she is. She says what she it, what she thinks, and that's why she's loved by many. Um, is there a certain part of America that um, she's kind of in that Will Wade category? You love her if, 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 if they're your coach, and if you're an opponent, you, you can't stand them? Uh, I guess so. Um, but I grew up with pick on somebody your own size. Just about everybody I know grew up with that saying, pick on somebody your own size. Does she mean that she wants Angel Reese to, uh, you know, start pitting her players against other players in, 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 a, in a steel cage match? Absolutely not. And what's funny is, is when I look around and I see Nancy Armour at USA Today writing a column, Shannon Star Sharp sticking his nose in it, and many of the others, you go look at their Twitter bios, and it's they're exactly who you think they are. And um, I, I think it's absolute nonsense. And good for her yesterday on radio with T-Bob and them to say, and she's not going to apologize, and I don't think she has anything to apologize for. Um, what was unfortunate on Sunday was that the SEC refs did not get a hold of that game, and they let it get to that point. It's solely on their backs as to what ended, what happened at the end of that basketball game. Yeah, and, and I will say this. If you watch the game closely, you know, first couple of possessions, you could see Angel Reese and Cardoso 
are being very physical. And there's a lot of yapping. There's a lot of talking. Flaugé talk, Angel Reese talk, South Carolina talk. Uh, once again, we get into this discrepancy with officiating. Look, uh, people are comparing them to the Detroit Pistons when they won the <laughs> NBA. No, no, the, mm. with the physicality in the way. Gino Oriama and many others have called out South Carolina, and that's when uh, Dawn Staley last year was defending the way that they play basketball. Uh, it's all about the officiating, and if they're not going to call it, then it's going to get to be – more and more pushing and shoving. I will tell you this, Cardoso got away with murder on the on the basketball court when they played in Baton Rouge. She had one foul, and it was ridiculous. That guy that we called Richard, whatever his last name was, was uh, uh, absolutely horrific. You get into this thing, Mike, I got to be honest, after the scare with last year poor, please, everybody, continue to pay, uh, pray for her. Uh, Coach Monkey said that she is in concussion protocol but expects to come around and should be good to go. We'll get the brackets on Sunday night. But, Mike, LSU is playing really well at the start of the game. And I said, look at this. Then they start turning it over. And then, of course, uh, as we know, made a great 9-0 run, cut it to one, took some bad shots, once again some more chirping. But those officials have got to realize they let that thing got out, get out of hand. And if the actuality was called the right way, when Flarge flailed up like this and the girl comes up and gets in her face, you cannot talk like that. Now, you couldn't have called it on him because they were going back up and forth. Oh, oh, by the way, the Angel Reese thing, she rolled her ankle again, so she was limping towards the bench, and all of a sudden, you see Cardoso, who had done a pushing gig and shoving incident when her national team played two weeks earlier, so uh, pretty much uh, typical behavior. But hey, you get away with what you can on the basketball court well, anywhere else. I'll but tell you, I'll tell you this. Let that game get out of hand. Being down on the court uh during games, these girls are as competitive and talk smack as much as the men in any sport. Absolutely. In fact, a lot of times you can read their lips on TV when you see the replays. I mean, what did you see early in that game? Angel Reese, all day, right? All F and day is what she said. Uh, going up against Cardoza down in the paint. And they were getting after it. And shame on the officials for, for letting that to continue and get, get to the point that it did. Um, certainly, they had to have known, had they paid attention, LSU, South Carolina earlier in the season. These teams are getting two teams. They're the two best teams in the league. Certainly, LSU hasn't broken through and finally beaten the Gamecocks. And, um, but I will say this at the end of the game, I think Kim Mulkey liked the fight in her team. And that's the why, why she said what she said about how much she, her team's ready and she likes the way they're playing. And, um, I think the way that thing went down and not necessarily the, the brouhaha at the end, I think she's excited about how her team is got a fire in them heading into tournament play, got a watch party Sunday night at, at the PMAC. Uh, they had sent that out tonight. Uh, I imagine they're going to have a really good crowd inside the PMAC to watch the uh, the brackets get uh, rolled out, and uh, should be a, a nice fun event. And then they'll head on. Uh, then they'll host two two games here. By the way, uh, South Carolina had a big lead against Tennessee in the semifinal game. Tennessee comes back to take the lead. They do not guard the inbounds pass. Only one point three or five left. Didn't guard anybody on the throw in. Doesn't guard Cardoso. She gets the ball, takes a step back, and hits an improbable three-point bank shot. First one she's ever made this year and, and probably in her career. So kudos to them. They did what it what it took to get there. But losing last year poor, and, and you saw how everybody was so concerned about her. That had an impact. A great game plan. One thing about it. Kim Mulkey and LSU has not had nearly the bench, nearly the talent, no. nearly the deepness, and these games are Gary all Gary Reese, Coach Reese has got some work to do. Let's give the stats. South Carolina has beaten them 16 straight times, and they're 4-0 against Kim Mulkey. Absolutely. I will say this. If you get last year poor back 100%, you get Michaela Williams back shooting the ball and not thinking too much because she's been in a little bit of a – uh, I don't want to call a slump, but just not as confident. And now you got Janae Kent, who gave him some minutes on the perimeter to spell these ladies. 
And Del Rosario comes in. She played possessed against Carolina. Didn't play good. I'm just saying, uh, with, without SEC referees, I definitely think they've got a chance to obviously uh, do some great I, I want to say something else. Nancy Armour, that jackass at USA Today, she is. it's very typical of her to stick her nose in this topic. She's the one who wrote all the exposés about Sharon Lewis and all that stuff got thrown out of court. Hadn't heard from her since. No retractions, no nothing. And so um, she's real, She's a real barrel of monkeys to invite to your Christmas party, I can tell you that. Um, well, Paul Newberry I, is the AP writer. Who, yeah, yeah. Go look him up. Know, Go look. look him up on Twitter and read his uh, uh, triple vaxxed and boosted up and uh, all this preferred pronouns. Pronouns, they tell you exactly who they are in their bios. But this this ought to make the LSU fan base happy because they know what Mulkey is bringing to the table and they know what she's building. And uh, granted, she's going to go heavy in the, in the portal. I still think Angel Reese got a, a, a good chance of coming back. And they're going to be good once again. Yeah, but this guy Newberry has, what, 300 followers? I, I, I mean, look, where do they dig these people up at? All I'm saying is, is that you read all that stuff and get pissed off. I don't read it because it's jibber jabber. All I'm saying to you is that when everybody hates you, like they hate Kim Mulkey and LSU basketball, reminds me when Nick Saban came to LSU because they knew what he was building. None of us knew when he was in Baton Rouge he'd have that many rings. Uh, God. Look, I'm going to one more minute and we're going to move on. But I'll say this there is absolutely an agenda. Okay. There's a lot of stuff that they don't know what truly went on with the Brittany Griner thing in Waco, and it's pure it's pure ugliness. Um, and Mulkey has gotten a really really bad rap on that. They couldn't stand the fact that she took the team to the White House when they won the national championship, even though she took her team to the White House under different presidents. But because she went the last time with a president that those folks didn't like. Then they want to get after her for that. And then that helps their dear friend at South Carolina recruit. And it's 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 a concerted effort. When you see Bakari Sellers at CNN, the biggest jackass of them all, walking around the arena, came to LSU uh, last uh, two months ago for that game, wearing a hot pink uh, uh, sweater. And uh, he likes to show his ass at every opportunity. Um, look. <laughs> Uh, it, it, it's and going on Twitter, calling her hashtag MAGA Mulkey. And, and then the folks at ESPN, Stephen A and Shannon Sharp. Uh, I, I see Whitlock. Uh, evidently, I need to go check that out. I, I, I see a lot of LSU fans are excited about the way he tackled the issue. And I'll, I'll give Ron Higgins some credit. I think he did a very nice uh, column about it, too. She owes no one an apology. And she is who she is. And uh, look, she ain't perfect. But uh I think there's a reason why everybody down here loves her. And there's a lot of reason why a lot of people in Waco still love her. Well, right. I, I'm a spicy guy, so I should not ever be criticizing anybody that, that hauls off and, and, and runs and, and pushes somebody. Uh, but I love what Coach Mulkey said. That wasn't a fight. There wasn't any fists thrown. There wasn't any choking. There wasn't any craziness. There was a shoving match and a jawing match. And, and this is going back to the point we made earlier. I think LSU will be better off when they get away from these SEC officials because you have to figure out early on, are they calling it tight? Are they going to call a touch foul? Or are you really going to body up? Those women were uh, – and I got to throw this last one in. Cardosa pushes Anissa Morrow from the foul line all the way to the baseline like two minutes before all of this crazy stuff happens. And they had made a basket on the play. She shoves her. so. Uh, you can talk about this. You can talk about that. It's part of the game. Bottom line is, is that uh, Kim Mulkey is love me or hate me, and she don't give a fly, and you know what. Yep. And that's – that's. Uh... And you know what? Dawn Staley's the same way. Dawn Staley, people love what she does, and, and, and everybody's got their – Well, within 10 minutes, here comes Jamil Hill doing what she does best. Who? Jamil Hill. I, I don't know that person. Yeah, there you go. All right. Um, Total racist idiot. Um, Michael Duhon, uh, Haley Van Lith, Duhon or Duhon? Uh, Haley Van Lith showed true moxie when she stood up for Flaugé when she got in the face of Cardosa. And you want to talk about a sweetheart, it's Flaugé. Um, the way Flaugé handles herself, 
you, you talk, you're talking about a girl there who's been in the public eye since what her early teens been on uh american idol and and uh a, a well-known uh person before she even got to lsu um uh to me she's as, as sweet as it gets and um We'll see what happens with her brother. I think he's going to be all right. But um, she did apologize to Coach Staley after yeah. the game, and uh, I did notice the uh, Carolina girls did not shake hands with LSU. So look, there is bad blood. You heard Angel Reese. They're not scared. Nobody's scared. And uh, let's just remind people: last year, seven and a half million people watched the final between LSU and Iowa. Mike, uh, Iowa is going to be a one seed. Carolina's going to be a one seed, USC probably a one seed, LSU a two seed. Let's hope the NCAA sends them to Albany one or two and not all the way to uh, BFE, Bun, Brick, Egypt, Portland. Uh, by the way, Final Four in Cleveland this year, and LSU will find out Sunday night at 7. You said to watch party. They'll either play Friday and Sunday or Saturday and Monday. And then, of course, if you win those two games. By the way, I'm not going to be I'm not going to be surprised that the NCAA committee does send Baylor here. I'm not going to be surprised. I hadn't kept up with Baylor enough to know, but uh, uh, we'll uh, see. Uh, uh, Charlie Cream did an updated bracket this morning. I think he's always pretty accurate on his seating. I don't know how accurate he is on when he fills out the whole bracket. Uh huh. Uh, he doesn't have Baylor coming here. He has Creighton, Miami, and Jackson State. I don't think Baylor's that. Haven't they been the top 16 team? Uh, they're a, they're a, um, they're a five. Okay. All right. Well, we'll see, but yep. no, LSU's is strong too. And I, I think they should take care of business, but we'll find out Sunday night. Uh, By the way, men, uh, kudos to Matt McMahon. Now look, he doesn't get the views that, that Kim Mulkey and the, and the lady tigers are getting, but nine and nine, nobody in their brother could tell you that was going to happen, uh, uh, three weeks into the season. Uh, but uh, everybody I talk to, insiders say uh, they win tomorrow at lunch. They're probably going to be in the MIT. Spectrum well care. If these were men, there would be no issue. Absolutely. And look, we all know the biography of, of Kim Mulkey and playing Little League Baseball uh, with the boys and not being able to play. And that's who she is. She's a tomboy. And nobody knows better than pick on somebody your own size than her and the way she grew up and the way most of us grew up. And that's what she meant by it. And um, these A's holes in the national media doing what they're doing, uh, they can shove it where the sun don't the sun don't shine. Um, okay, Nadia Price, uh, goodbye. She got in again. Yeah, uh, she's done. Go ahead, Nadia. Yep. Uh, Dane Bergeron says, "Good evening, Mike and Buddy. Let me scroll up and get to some of your comments. Um, if you're enjoying the show, please hit that like button and um, spread the word on." Tiger Bait uh, Live. Uh, we're going to go to about 9 o'clock. Um, Trey Pawtan with a super chat. Thank you for that. Good evening, guys. LSU's brand is rock and rolling. And um, there you go. Uh, let's see. What is this? What, you're not allowed to say that? Amazing how come y'all some black female players are sweethearts? She is. She's a. She's fantastic. Nice as can be. Improvement for Flage, and uh, look, she was fantastic in that uh, in that Saturday sem semifinal against Ole Miss. Of course, after she hit the three, uh, pounded the chest and said, "That one's for you, for Poa." And that was a scary situation. There was a lot of emotion, a lot of passion. The tournament was in Greenville, South Carolina, and uh, as we know, they had a, a sellout crowd. But uh, quite frankly. Ten and a half was the spread on that game. LSU easily covered that game. I think it was 69-68. They made the run. They were one point down. Didn't play great. The craziness. And, uh, of course, the great thing about Angel Reese, not leaving the bench and getting into it, uh, uh, because if you do get booted for fighting, you got to sit out the first game, the next game. Well, ESPN had everybody going oh, nervous yeah, yeah. initially. Yeah. I mean, I posted on our live game oh, no, no, chat. It was like, man. I'm trying to figure out, boy, okay. <laughs> I was immediately remembering, you know, the cream has Jackson State coming to the PMAC. I mean, Jackson State gave ever, 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 LSU everything they wanted two years ago. Well, look, it all happens. And so if, you only, if you only had a start in five yeah, and nothing else. It. Yeah, but you, you, it happened so fast. And unfortunately, that is one time they lived up to the acronym 
the especially stupid programming network. Yeah, uh, Robert Barone, South Carolina, will not win the championship this year. Somewhere along the way, they will get beat. I don't know. They got a hell of a team. Yeah, they do. They got a lot of depth, but um, they're very good. I wouldn't bet against them. Yeah. Um. All right. Let's see. By the way, we're back out at uh, football practice a week from tomorrow morning. Uh, they've had a break. They'll get back at it at Tuesday. Uh, this Tuesday, we don't have access, but we'll be back with our next football report on Thursday. Got a lot of tidbits that we didn't put into the first one. And um, as always, um, uh, linebacker commitment uh, this weekend. And did it kind Ross, of give us a quick overview yeah, of what you heard for Junior Day. Ross, Houston, North Shore. Uh, Six one and a half, about two hundred pounds, can run. Uh, what is he? A ten four hundred meters guy. Uh, Blake Baker, extremely happy to have him, and um, uh, he knows the uh, prototype of what he wants. And um, uh, that news uh, happened at uh, a little after ten Saturday night. Uh, we broke that news on Tiger Bait, and um, yeah, that's a nice pickup. And they had a lot of other great uh, visitors. I've got an inbox full of recruiting uh, quotes from all the guys that were there. I just need to get it out. There's a few of them. I want to make uh, bigger standalone recruiting updates. I've been running late on that all week. Um, but uh, suffice to say, there was, a, there was a bunch of kids, too, that we had initially on the list that were unable to make it for whatever reason. But it was still a very well-attended event, and uh, all the, the recruits that were there gave it very high marks. Um, all right, uh, let's pay some bills. We're here because of Proud Roofing each and every week. And uh, let's hear from Mike and Alex. Hi, I'm Michael. I'm Alex. At Proud Roofing, we handle commercial and residential work. TPO, shingle and metal inventory. We, we got, got it. it. Property still in disarray from the recent hailstorms. Insurance claims? No, no problem. problem. But you know Pride Roofing is the official roofer at TigerBait.com. In fact, notify TigerBait and we'll give you a free roof inspection. And on top of that, you get a free year subscription. Call 855 Pride 16. Se habla espanol. There you go. Give them a call 855 Pride 16. Call them for a free roof inspection. You're not obligated. Have them come out, inspect your roof, whether it's a commercial or residential, anywhere in South Louisiana. Tell them you heard about them on Tiger Bait, and they're going to pay for you have Tiger Bait premium free for a year. That's a $99 value. So whether you buy a roof from them or not, $99 value, they're going to pay for you to have uh, Tiger Bait free for a year. And um, if anything, they're going to let you know uh, how much life you have left in your roof, and you're going to have a contact when you are indeed ready for a roof. And, of course, they'll work with your insurance adjuster if you've had any damage from the hail and the various other storms we've had in the last few months. There are so many roofing commercials, uh, and I won't name any of them, but I saw a couple of silly ones before I came over here tonight. And, look, we're not going to inundate the TV with a roofing commercial every hour or two hours. Everybody's got a prerogative. Mike and I try to give you the lowdown on what they bring to the table commercial, residential, and metal roofs. Metal roofs still very, very popular. Once again, PFM, his uh, family, his nephew, his in-laws, all of them, once we spread it word of mouth, you obviously have the great deal. If you call and, and tell them about Tiger Bait, you heard about it on Tiger Bait, free one-year service. But we go even further, folks. They will show up in the pencil. They will come out. They'll get it done on time. Give them an opportunity. That word right there, the pride roofing they take great pride and the roof over your head is just important as the roof over ours and theirs and uh, in baton rouge mike kirby they're very busy if you call 275-2041 get an answer machine please leave a message and of course mike all over north shore uh new orleans hammond uh baton rouge wherever you want all the way to mobile 855 pride 16 absolutely um Let's see. Let me scroll up and get some more of your comments. Um, LSU baseball heading to Mississippi State. I had Kendall Rogers on today. Go check that out on our YouTube channel, our weekly batter up segment. I thought he was really good. And um, we do 15 or 20 minutes, of course, brought to you by uh, Kenny Haynes. And uh, I thought he was good today, but uh, he says Mississippi State's uh, really wanting this series bad. They're going to have a packed house. And uh, the team leaves tomorrow. And, um, 
You know, what was that stat you said earlier? How many LSU baseball games in the last uh, how many days? Six. Uh, they, they played Southeastern last Wednesday night, which is why we were not on. Uh, had a day off, then played three against Xavier. Had a day off and then played North Dakota State. Beat them 6-1 yesterday. Shut out this afternoon, 7 nothing. Moved the 1 o'clock start to 4 o'clock. Uh, look, um, Mississippi State uh, started off rough. Now they have been playing much better. They will be packed. Uh, as I re will reiterate, at State, you'll be happy if you go over there and win two out of three. Florida comes in the following weekend at Arkansas. Arkansas is number one in the country. Got pitching galore. Uh, and then, of course, Vandy comes in and then finishing up at Tennessee, the first five SEC weekends. But, Mike, we said it last week, pitching galore. I don't ever remember seeing this many lefties, this many good ones. If you get Will Helmers and Aiden Moffitt and some of these other guys, that Samuel Dutton, that have not been in the limelight, Kate Anderson, by the way, last Wednesday night, seven consecutive strikeouts of the Southeastern Lions to open up the game. And, uh, of course, as everybody knows, uh, Luke Holman is the real deal. Gage jump, the ball's jumping out of his hand. He's the number two starter. And Thatcher Hurt, 6-4-1. Six on Friday night on the digital network, four on Saturday afternoon on the SEC network, and one o'clock Sunday, of course, on the digital network. That is, of course, all weather uh, pending. By the way, after the show's over with, you're going to have Jay Johnson. Um, in fact, I'm looking at it now. Uh, we're going to have Jay Johnson uh, post game video, Mac Bingham, mm -hmm. and Will Helmers. We're going to have both, all, the, all three of those up on the site immediately after the show. And uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but this is the first time we've had post-game video uh, from LSU baseball home games. And um, some of you have noticed, and I just want to reiterate, the reason why you cannot hear the questions from the media is because at LSU baseball, they don't pass around a wireless microphone for each media person to ask their question. Um, we're doing our best to implore the other media people in the room to please uh, not be a low talker. You got low talkers, you got high talkers, you got loud talkers. It seems that the guys that cover the baseball beat are low talkers. And that's why you can't hear the questions when you watch our videos. But Jay Johnson's loud and clear. So um, I'm going to keep trying to convince my fellow uh, uh, peer group in the media to talk a little louder so you can hear the questions. But it's not our fault. Believe me. Is that good, buddy? Yeah, uh, look, it wasn't that long ago we were having to implore them to get the wireless mic for football questions and basketball questions. It, it makes uh, – and I play, thanks to Mike, putting a lot of that on the site if you listen to the show on, on Pelican Sports Radio daily. Now, we won't have a show tomorrow because LSU's playing at 12, and I can't go against them live. But it just makes it so much better when you actually hear the question – Versus listening to Koki or Rabelais or Cabo going, oh, yeah, Jay, you're going to throw past your third on Sunday or you're going to put that in the end. And you're sitting there going, what did, what did he say? Um, but look, uh, good problem to have. Once again, 2-2-2. Two, two, two. LSU baseball, 2. Softball, 2. Gymnastics, 2. Men's uh, win tomorrow, probably NIT. And football, uh, we're going to have some spicy tidbits uh, when we get back at it uh, in, in eight days. And um, I promise um, – Mike is going to calm down about the D-tackle situation by the time they kick it off this season, and maybe I'll come around on that um, on that uh, arena being done uh, in the next um, seven, eight years. Absolutely. <laughs> Chance Babham says uh, baseball media are extreme low talkers, and um, I think it doesn't help when I, when, I, when I get after them for being low talkers. I think they talk even lower just to spite me. So maybe I need to try uh, – what is it uh, – Try it with honey rather than vinegar. Um, yeah, however that saying goes. Um, all right, guys, let me scroll up and get some more of your comments. Um, still a lot of people talking, uh, South Carolina fans in here going getting crazy. Um, Scotty B. I wonder if some of this hate towards Mulkey and the media has affected recruiting. They can't sign anyone right now. Five-star Addison Deal originally from Louisiana committed to Iowa last night. Look, Sarah Strong's still the one that's hanging out there. Um, uh, there was one or two that LSU really wanted in this class that ended up staying closer to home. 
Uh, you can see where that happens. Um, I don't know where things are going to stand with uh, Sarah Strong, um, but I'll tell you this: uh, that that would, uh, I think that's one that they really w w hope to get uh, in this recruiting class. Yeah, well, South Carolina people think that she's going to be a lock to come over there, and and, and if they get her along with what they've already gotten, yeah. uh, LSU's going to have to make up a lot of ground on the portal. And no doubt about it. And that's the great thing about the right in this day and age, you know, whether you like NIL or the transfer portal and the, the stipulations and the rules. Of course, Saban went over to Washington and 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 tried to, to, to talk some sense to them. And I don't think any of us can depend on them to, to do anything with this NIL. So, but they're going to have to go heavy. Well, and, and, and here's the other thing, you know, it's, it's a whole different animal in, in women's college basketball. You know, we know Brian Kelly wants to build his program through high school recruits, but you know, most of your college basketball players, women's basketball players stay the entire four years. So if you get someone who's just a sophomore, I mean, you're, you could still have two, three years left of eligibility uh, where they, they where they play and l unless they're they project as a, as a first round pick, and uh, and then regardless, even if they're a one and done, uh, Mulkey knows how to coach them. Hey, speaking of South Carolina and LSU, uh, the first SEC road game for LSU this year at South Carolina. So uh, look, uh, South Carolina uh, had a good run. One back-to-back -back natties in baseball, but um, that's probably their premier sport. LSU, obviously, as we've been alluding to, doing great. But football is the big money maker, and and, and we'll see. It's going to be an interesting scenario. Still got to win that first game, but uh, Mike, uh, these Carolina fans are relentless, and and it's two different cultures, and and they should be proud of what they've done. But I want to say that right now, Kim Mulkey has four rings, and Dawn Staley has two. There you go. Uh, I, is that going to get close, that gap get close? Maybe. I, I wouldn't bet against them this year, but um, it, it's a good rivalry, and I, I think that um, – Well, you got to have it. you got to have a rivalry like that. But the fans don't like each other, and neither do the teams. They did not shake hands, and, and I didn't really want them to because I'll be honest – Well, it's their bell cow. They're not good in anything else. Well, I, you said it. Sorry, if you're a cop, you're a cop. There you go. Um, all right. Uh, really, you guys need to look at nonaturals.com. Uh, Tiger fans, get ready for dispensary grade gummies delivered discreetly to your door with no naturals. And I'm told to try bliss and rest. And uh, they've got a whole uh, selection of uh, gummies for you to choose from, craft, crafted with dispensary-grade, top-shelf quality cannabinoids, adaptogens, and terpenes. No nat Naturals offers a variety of gummies tailored for your needs. Try Bliss with Delta 9 THC for a, a euphoric lift. Energy with CBC and Cordyceps mushrooms for a natural boost. Focus with CBD, CBG, Cordyceps, and Lion's Mane mushrooms for clear-headed concentration, Lucid and CBDV, and Blue Lotus for serene mindfulness. Rest with CBD, CBDV, and CBN for a deep, restful slumber. Mix them for an even more elevated experience. Shop now at shop.nonaturals.com. Order today. Use code TIGERBAIT10, all one word, TIGERBAIT10, and you'll get 10% off your order. Know your cannabinoids. Know your experience. No naturals. All right. You may get uh, some requests from the South Carolina people for some of those gummies if they don't win it all this year. Now, obviously, they are the odds on favorite. And let's give them credit now. They won the SEC Women's Tournament eight of the last 10 years. Let me tell you something. Down on the court, I've said it on the show. I told you this. Pre-game warm-ups, and you look at that South Carolina team and the length that their players have – the number of big uh, uh, bigs that they've got down low that they can in the depth. LSU does not have the depth. It, the program is not there yet. And like Kim Mulkey says, everybody's gotten spoiled because she won it in year two. In reality, um, you know, maybe they should have went to a, a, an elite eight last year. And then, you know, but she, she did what she did and, and, but it sure has made the SEC women's basketball a, a much bigger deal. And um, certainly, like you said, it's it's a rivalry now, but sooner or later, 
to be a true rivalry, you have to break through and win one. I think their transfer uh, coming over from Oregon, who's been an excellent shooter for a pow pow. Uh, I think I heard uh, Kim, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Dawn Staley say that uh, she's coming back for another year. Uh, look, uh, Angel's going to make that decision uh, after it is all over this year. Uh, you know the you know the ins and outs. You know what the, the deal is. My gut feeling is that Angel comes back for another year and Haley goes WNBA. If she doesn't make it, she plays overseas. We'll see. But uh, good to see Haley play appreciably better. And uh, there's no doubt she has now become much more appreciated and loved the way she handled that uh, brouhaha. Absolutely. She wasn't scared. Um, Roger Ramjet rumor has Justin Jefferson of Cincinnati with Joe and Jamar. What a hoot. Uh, sure looks like the Vikings are shedding a whole lot, aren't they? Yeah. And, and I think the problem with Justin Jefferson, of course, Cousins signed a monster deal with the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, the problem you have with that, of course, is that you got to pay Chase next year. But Justin's going to get his, uh, uh, you know what they got to do. They got to they got to get a better offensive line to protect Joe Burrow. But there's no doubt uh, if they don't get Justin Jefferson, they may always come in and uh, swoop up Brian Thomas Jr. Jaden Daniels, everything we're hearing, Mike, two, three, or four. Who who knows? He could even go one, but he's going to definitely go top four. Malik Neighbors definitely going to go seven or eight. And Brian Thomas Jr., we said it last year, going into football. Do you really realize? Remember you talked about that kid, Ashley, before he said he's kind of quiet. Shelton Sampson, the same thing. you got to wake up and realize how good you can be. And Brian Thomas Jr. kicked it up a notch. Now he's going to get paid. And uh, once again, when you're recruiting quarterbacks after Burrow and Daniels, recruiting the wide receivers of what's come through here lately, it is easy to get the skill position. But please, uh, cue up Miss Clara with the Wendy's commercial. Where's the beef? Get some beef in here so he can relax by the time yeah. we take it off in, in September in Vegas. We get back out there next Thursday? Is yes. That, yeah. Um, and hope, you know, hopefully, hopefully we're outdoors. I'm going to get you a shirt that says, where's the beef? Yeah. I'll go stand uh, on the sideline by Bo Davis. <laughs> Um, and relax, people. This is good, all this talk about Carolina and, and LSU with women's basketball. Nobody gave a flying rat's A about women's basketball I tell pe when I te Nikki was here. I, te on. I tell people all the time what Kim Mulkey has done with LSU women's basketball, and for a guy who's run a website in this market since the mid-'90s, um, you know, we, we all know each other. We've all been to conventions. We were either on networks or left networks. I'm independent now, but we all know each other. And it's always about what do you do in this season? Oh, well, uh, this guy that covers Florida State doesn't have this. And we all know each other. And I tell them what Mulkey has done at LSU Women's Basketball is essentially the equivalent of giving the media here basically like a second football season. Because that's that's what that's what the equivalent is as far as the interest, the views, the clicks. Uh, when Kim always talks about y'all just want clickbait, she delivers. She delivers clickbait. She did it again on Sunday, didn't she? Um, everybody's jumping on. There's a reason why all these outlets are on it. Partially because of, of, of an agenda, but partially because of the traffic. They see the internals. They're seeing what all those columns, and when they get on YouTube and start talking about it, uh, I guarantee you there isn't another Stephen A. Shannon Sharp uh, video that's been uploaded by those two in the last month that has gotten the views that that one has. So I asked Kobe at Brubacher's today as I'm, I'm, you know, doing the show and all that. I said, look, how many how many clicks and views you think Kim Mulkey got on the press conference after the game? He says, uh, maybe 10,000. What's the latest? 277,000? Yeah. yeah. It's unheard of. Yeah. It's unheard of. And and so a lot of it is hate, a lot of it's love, a lot of it's going back and forth. And I'm sure there'll be a lot of comments about our opinion. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 a and here's the other part of it. It's like um it's it's like a, a, a radio shock jock. Um the famous Howard Stern quote. Half of his listeners love him, half of his listeners hate him, and the other half listen more minutes than the people who like him. Right? It's the same thing. 
Um, I look at the geographic breakdown of all the Kim Mulkey videos. It's every every state in America, and and a lot of countries overseas. She she draws eyeballs from everywhere. And look, if I could have the uh, perfect scenario for the Final Four this year, uh, it would be something like LSU playing Iowa and South Carolina playing USC. Those would be the four I'd love to see uh, in Cleveland this year. Chucky, Mike, how do we look at running back? Um, I like what you have out there. You just need more of it. Um, I think they get need to get a, a running back in the portal. But I will say this. It's, you know, when they have Trey Holly in, a, in their own little special category on, on the roster, um, there's a whole lot of scuttlebutt where people think that uh, that's not going to be what people think and that that he's going to have his day in court and, and the truth's going to come out. And so, of course, the legal process takes time. But uh, you, you can't uh, worry about him now. I think you got to go on the portal in May and get you another running back, just in case. Um, then you'll get um, Durham in June to be added to the mix, and um, they'll be fine. Uh, it's a very talented group. Uh, Josh Williams looks the part. I just want to see Caleb Jackson be the guy. You had eight last year, so you had an eight-pack if you're a, a beer drinker. And, of course, as we know, that got paired down very quickly. John Emery, Romani Goodwin, Trey Bradford, uh, Logan Diggs, and um, uh, there was one other that escapes me. But, uh, well, of course, Trey Holly's indefinitely suspended right now. Look, Caleb Jackson, coach, uh, was asked twice last week about Caleb Jackson. He did not answer. Uh, we know Frank is the one that plays the running backs. He's going to have to mature and do all the little things but as far as a bull in a china closet and running with the football, explosive, and catching the ball and, and can take it to the house, uh, he's a guy that's going to get a lot of reps. I think K Caden Durham's going to come in and, and be fantastic. He can take the house on any play. But uh, I agree with you now. I definitely think they're going to probably bring in a, a running back in the portal. Malachi Lane, by the way, uh, is also a uh, walk-on, wears number 30. He's been around a couple of years. You'll see him at spring football. In case you missed it this week, 1 o'clock on the SEC Network Plus, April 13, for the time and date for the LSU spring game. All right, Alumni Hall, LSU fans, I'm going to tell you about the best place to get all your Tiger gear. Alumni Hall, shop at their store off Blue Bonnet and Perkins Row, or shop online at alumnihall.com. They've got it all. All the new Nike gear, Champion, Johnny O, Onward Reserve, Peter Millar, Southern Tide, and more. They've got the nice polos you've been looking for, hats, Yeti, and all the new LSU baseball gear is in stock. They've got every color jersey. The youth jerseys is their number one seller. In particular, the yellow, the gold LSU youth baseball jersey has been the number one seller. They sold out back in stock. Make sure you get one uh, for your little one. And um, discount code TIGERBAIT, all one word, TIGERBAIT. You can use it online at alumnihall.com, or you can use it in store at the register. So if you're if you're in Perkins Row, you go to Alumni Hall, you pick out uh, what you want to buy. When you go to check out, say Tiger Bait, and they're going to give you 10% discount right there at the register. And what's really nice, uh, those of you who buy LSU gear online, mail order, the stuff that you buy at alumnihall.com is shipping from Baton Rouge. So if you're in the vicinity or in North Louisiana or East Texas, Dallas, wherever you're at as an LSU fan, it's going to get to you quicker than it is from the Northeast at uh, some of the uh, bigger uh, online shops like Fanatics. So alumnihall.com, give them a call and use code TIGERBAIT uh, to save money. You know, I always talk about it. Look, uh, we are in and out of the Perkins Blue Bonnet, uh, uh, I guess you could say, area quite often. Give yourself an extra 15 to 20 minutes. Trust me, it is not going to be boring. So much great stuff. Once again, 10%, you tell them Tiger Bait. Yeah, it, Alumni Hall, is, is if, you're, if you're an LSU fan, it's probably like me and Trader Joe's. I go in there thinking I'm going to spend $30 and end up walking out after having spent $120. Uh, if there's an LSU logo on anything, they've got it in that store. Um, all right, let's see. Hey, real quick, folks, while Mike's uh, queuing up uh, more comments, Senior night with LSU Gymnastics. Mike, I really think if they can peak at the right time, 
and land on the balance beam and not have any falls. They're the best team in the country, bar none, with the floor. They've had 98 more than ever before this year. Haley uh, Bryant, as we know, is just as classy as it gets. Six times she's been the SEC Gymnast of the Week. Uh, once again, senior night, 7.30 Friday night. Haley, Libby Dunn, Kaya Johnson, all those uh, incredible women that have been around. I know Jay Clark wants it packed. And so you have gymnastics Friday night at 7.30, senior night. Softball hosting Ole Miss this weekend after sweeping Kentucky. What did we say last week? If they win two out of three, everybody would be happy. Swept Kentucky, still 23-0. Baseball 6-4-10 at Mississippi State. And men's basketball, once again, tomorrow noon against Mississippi State. If they win, they play noon on Friday against the number one seed, Tennessee. So plenty of uh, reasons to stay invested. And I'm kind of glad that the ladies have a little bit of a break. Uh, they play their tournament one week earlier, SEC tournament men this week, of course, uh, uh, starts. Uh, and, and we know that, uh, uh, obviously, uh, if LSU wins a the game, they'll probably be NIT. Most people tell me, don't look for Jalen Cook to be back. He's been suspended, and um, unfortunately, um, he just didn't want to adhere to the policies. Uh, Matt McMahon didn't really have much that he could do when you uh, act uh, act up. Uh, I, I, and I can't imagine Matt McMahon being hard to, to play for. No, no. Um, but Trey Hannibal has put this team on the back. Jordan Wright, also the two bigs, Hunter Dean and Will Baker. Uh, I know they'd like to be longer and, and have more toughness, but uh, be something they'd uh, get into. I will say this for Matt McMahon. Uh, if you're going to show the LSU fan base that you're here to stay and, and, and you're the, the coach for the future, you cannot let uh, CNAC from Newman get away. You got to keep that one home. That is a must. Yeah. Uh, GE3, LSU gave USC what they have been dishing out for years under Staley. Two great coaches want to be queens. It's going to be spicy, and it's great for the sport, and that viewership is off the charts. You know, that's absolutely true. I mean – you know, all the stuff that we talked about earlier on this show, all the stuff that's been written and, uh, you know, bandied back and forth about what took place on Sunday. Uh, the bottom line is it is feeding the fever that is uh, NCAA women's basketball. And, um, you know, when Mulkey is asked about, can you believe what the game is like right now and what we're seeing in the in the surgeons and when the LSU team goes on the road and and – Fans come out and pack the place and set records for attendance uh, on an opposing team's court because they're there to see Angel Reese and Flaugé and Van Litt, et cetera. Um, it, it's only going to – it's only growing. So um, there you go. Uh, Faye Schubert uh, <laughs> says, love buying from Alumni Hall from your website. I love the selection and quality of the LSU clothes, and they always add a personal note to the package. That's awesome. Uh, thanks for sharing that, Faye. Um, they're, they're they're great people. They're a big part of the community. They do they they do they're in the, involved in the NIL part of it with players as well. Uh, they've had autograph signings and stuff there, and um, it's just a beautiful store right there in Perkins Row. Um, J Rock, I think the depth of South Carolina has been a problem. They can go ten deep if LSU can have a healthy eight, possibly nine deep. They can beat South Carolina. Well, you know, we had we don't talk about it because it's been a while, but Samaya Smith would have been a, a nice thing to have. Um, you know, Kateri Poole, whatever happened there, she's not with you. She got in the transfer I portal. I saw that. Today. I saw that. Kateri Poole's in the transfer portal. I, I didn't know she would have another year. Uh, but she does. She's got another year of eligibility. They could have used her at that Donnybrook. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Hey, we wish you the best. Uh, uh, look, here's, here's the key, I think. Uh, you get last tier poor. She was really starting to come into her own. I love that dribble drive penetration where she she fakes and comes back in, in the scoop layup, made a couple of threes, fantastic free throw shooter. Uh, look, you can talk about the men's game and the women's game. The men don't shoot free throws as good as the LSU women. And trust me, there have been some broadcasts where the women have outdrawn drawn the men. So it is a big time TV high. Like I said. My uh, fantasy uh, for it would be LSU play in Iowa in the semis. Uh, and, and then, of course, uh, uh, USC and uh, South Carolina. We'll see all of the seeds. But uh, uh, look, uh, LSU's got Poa, uh, Del Rosario, and Janae Kent. 
And I think that's the only three that you can lean on. I think Janae Kent's going to get better with Tom. I do too. And Del so. Rosario, I don't think she Del Rosario has even scratched the surface. Or I don't know that she realizes how she how unstoppable she could be. She wanted it against Carolina. Now she yeah. played sluggers the first time they put in in the weekend. And she's game. got a nice touch on a short jump shot too. And everybody tells me they are going to sell out the Pete Maravich Assembly Center, of course, as soon as we get to brackets on Sunday night. Absolutely. We'll be there covering it, and we'll have uh, all that uh, for you on Tiger Bait on our YouTube channel. Um, check us out here in the next few minutes. Jay Johnson and two LSU baseball player interviews after beating North Th uh, Dakota State again earlier today. Uh, that'll be up on our YouTube channel. Go to TigerBait.com and subscribe for our premium content. One dollar gets you on the website. We'd love to have you as a part of our community on TigerBait.com. And so we're going to head out. And um, thanks again, buddy. Yeah, good seeing you. By the way, Luke Coleman, 40 strikeouts, four walks, has not given up an earned run. Gage Jump, 0, 0, 0 ERA. Uh, I think he's a 21 Ks to two walks. They have been fantastic. Thatcher Hurt uh, obviously is uh, the third starter. They will go. Yeah, and Anderson only four. going 2.2 2 .2 last night. He, he's, he's available if needed. Who's that? Anderson. Oh, yeah. Kate Anderson. Yeah. What is, is – uh, I never seen a guy as a freshman. That was pretty special what he did last Wednesday night. But pitching for – look, uh, LSU, uh, we'll say it again, probably more pitching depth than ever before at LSU baseball this year. All right. Thank you all. If you enjoyed the show, please hit that like button on the way out. Uh, helps us uh, big time with the YouTube algorithm when you do that. And, of course, subscribe and hit that notification bell. All right, everybody. Thank you all. See you next week. Good night.